So if you want your music to sound as good as it possibly can on streaming platforms or iTunes itself, be sure to watch the video. I'm going to talk about the tool that you need to use when you're mastering your tracks so you can make sure it sounds as good as it possibly can. You should probably do this every master you do, honestly. So I have a master here by a band Lamphead that I did recently. It's off their debut EP and I recommend checking them out. So I'll leave a link in the description if you would like to. And I'm gonna show you what it sounds like on iTunes and then what the original master sounds like. Obviously this video is being uploaded to YouTube, which means it's going to be converted as well. So the difference might be quite inaudible, but at least I'm gonna show you how to use the tools so you can use them yourself at home or in the studio where you're working. So what we're gonna do is load up this AU Round Trip AAC. Now this is a AU plugin, so it'll work in Logic and Reaper as well as I think there's other ways to use it in Pro Tools and Cubase and that kind of thing. And there are alternatives to this like the new and master check ADPTR Streamliner. But today, let's just, I'm gonna take you through using this plugin here. So as you can see, we've got iTunes Plus. This is the AAC codec. And what this does is it allows us to hear the original, which is the untouched audio versus the encoded audio. And when I flick between these, that means I'm flicking between the WAV file and the AAC. So let's just give it a quick listen. I did make sure this song sounded good on iTunes when I did it, so there'll probably be barely any difference. Back home and that's the last place you wanna go. So there is a subtle change, but it virtually sounds like the same song, which is very ideal when you're uploading your music to streaming platforms. You don't want them to change your music. And I know some mastering engineers just think it's out of their control and they just upload whatever. It's not out of your control. You can absolutely tell what it's going to sound like on iTunes by using tools like this. And when I do a master, I'd prefer it to sound virtually identical to the original when I upload it, just because that's the way the artist intended it to sound, that's the way I intended it to sound, and overall, it just sounds better, it's higher quality. So let's go into a bit more information here, it'll show you the peaks of the audio, and then the peaks of the encoded audio. So you can see here, we're not close to clipping the encoders, because it's at minus 0 0.2, and if I play, if I reset this and then I play a little bit as well, you'll be able to see it kind of updating in real time. And if there are any clips, they will appear here or it'll appear red here. So yeah, not close to clipping the encoders, which is why it sounds quite identical to the original. If this was clipping, then the encoded version would start to sound much worse. And that's what I'm gonna show you right here. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to raise the output ceiling to just minus 0.1. So that's 0.1 dBs below zero. For my masters that I do, I leave between 0.3 dBs and 0.5 dBs, depending on how much limiting I wanna do or how loud I wanna make it. The louder I make it, the lower the ceiling is, just so it can sound good on the encoders. But I'm gonna show you what it's like to have a higher ceiling and add half a dB and see what it does to the encoders here. So as you can see, even just with a higher ceiling and half a dB added, it's clipping the encoders and there's even some intersample peaks on the original. And that's what I've been trying to tell you. you. You don't want to clip these encoders because they can degrade the audio quality. And even just flicking between the source and encoded then, 
I found the soundscape kind of collapsed a little bit and we lost a lot of the depth of the stereo image and kind of the transients, which is just not ideal. I just much prefer make it sound great through these encoders, get rid of that, have the encoders working with your original song to make sure it sounds as good as it can when you upload it. So key takeaway from this video, use this plugin to listen to your music to make sure it sounds good on iTunes before you upload it. Unclipped encoders, sound better than clipped encoders so just don't clip them i know lots of people clip them but you know i sometimes think imagine if they didn't clip them the audio would just sound higher quality it would just sound better like the encoders don't work well when they're being clipped hope you learned something from this video i hope it wasn't too confusing and i kind of got the point across that you need to listen to how your music will sound before you upload it just because it can drastically influence the sound if you're not paying attention to it or if you're not doing the best practices to make sure your music sounds as good as it can on these platforms my name is josh i'm a mastering engineer and i really appreciate you taking the time to watch my videos and remember what i always say Use your ears.